Breaking news, the numbers are out. Well, good afternoon everybody, how y'all doing? Pretty good here and welcome to the channel. Hey, I just saw a report on how Toyota is doing through June of 2019. So I wanted to get on here and, uh, and share that with you guys in case you hadn't seen it, let you know how Toyota is doing. Now selfishly, I have two Toyotas, right? I have a truck, or a, well two trucks. I have a Tacoma and I have a Tundra back there. So selfishly, I want to make sure or hope that Toyota is doing well because I like this brand or these brands, these models, and I want them to continue. I want them to continue to be available and evolve. So I have a vested interest in this myself, as do many other Toyota truck drivers out there. But let's start off with Toyota as a whole. As a whole, Toyota is down 3.1% through June 2019, this year. Now, what makes that up? Well, Toyota and Lexus are kind of split off in these, uh, in these numbers. Toyota is down 3.6%. Lexus is actually up half a percent. That's how you arrive at overall minus 3.1%. But what are we really concerned with here? At least me and you guys out there who drive trucks, are the trucks, right? Trucks are actually up 2.5%. Now, Toyota has two trucks, right? They have the Tacoma, which in this case is up 4.8%. And the Tundra is down 2.3%. That's not good, I don't like that. So for 2019 units sold, the Tacoma has sold 121,886 trucks so far this year. That's pretty good. Tundra has sold 54,497. Well, given those percentages and the decrease, obviously, that's not so good. Now, another thing I'll mention uh, briefly is the SUVs. There's only one model that Toyota has in the SUV line um, that's actually up. And that is the Land Cruiser. It's up 6.9% and they've sold a whopping 1,628 of them. Not very many, so it doesn't really take much to move those numbers, right? Now I will say of all the others, the other Toyota you know, SUVs, um, they're either flat or negative. There's a couple in there that were zero, unchanged if you will, um, or just flat. So. Why? Why is Tacoma up and Tundra down? Well, I have my own theories on that, and these are my theories. First of all, the, Tac the Tacoma is reliable. It's always been known for its reliability, right? I mean, when you put it up against all the other ones, the Fords and, and the, yeah, whatever the heck else is out there, they've always been the most reliable. They've had that reputation for years now. And I've had some of the other ones, going way back to the S10, if you remember the Chevy S10, and the Ford Ranger. And I will attest that the Tacomas that I've had, four of them, I never had any issue with. They, have, they were always more reliable than the Fords that I had out there, and even the Chevy S10s. Uh, capability, the Tacoma's a capable truck. I mean, it's, it's four-wheel drive, it's well known for its off-road capabilities. Uh, they do have a broad range. You know, you can still get a manual transmission in the Toyota Tacoma. I don't believe that's true in the new Ford Ranger. Now, I've driven the new Ford Ranger, and the big theory was that Ford was going to come in and they were going to just, they were going to knock Toyota off its pedestal, right? Ford Ranger was going to take over. Well, that hasn't happened. I've heard that results against Ford, and I don't have the numbers, but the results of the Ford Ranger sales have been disappointing, I've heard. And I can believe that. I drove one a couple of months ago, and it was blasé. There was nothing special about it. I didn't like the power, although people like to argue with me that it's more powerful. If it is, it doesn't feel that way. The only thing that I liked, there was one thing that I liked about that Ford Ranger, and that's the sound that the door made when you close it. It had a nice little sound when you closed it. You know what I'm saying? Kind of sports car-like. That was pretty cool. 
But the rest of it, it almost felt to me like they've kind of prescribed to GM's old mantra. Um, and that is, let's just take a bunch of parts and throw them together and call it a new model. Parts that are already on the shelf, stuff that we already have, let's just throw it together and call it a new model. And I think that's what they've done. At least that's what it feels like with that Ford Ranger to me. I, I don't know. I could be wrong, but it sure feels that way. Um, so what's going on with the Tundra? I mean, the Tundra is down 2.3%. You know, I, I can't say that I'm overly surprised. I mean, let's start right at the top of things, and that's advertising. You know, Ford and Ram and even Nissan advertise the crap out of their vehicles. You can't watch a TV show, typically, or a sporting event without seeing an advertisement for one or all of those vehicles. I don't see that with the Tundra. I don't know why, but I don't see it. Next is, is just some of the aspects of the Tundra itself, I guess. Poor fuel economy. You know, everybody hates it when you talk about fuel economy. You know, it's a truck. It's supposed to get bad gas mileage. Why? Why is it supposed to get bad gas mileage? Because it's a truck. Because that's the way it's always been? Well, why don't we go back to horse and buggy then, if that's the case? I mean, come on. There are trucks out there that are stomping the Tundra, and that's part of the problem. I mean, a lot of people, when they look, they look at fuel economy. You know, the common person, they go out and they see that, and it's like, well, that rules the Tundra out right away. I mean, why would I buy a Tundra when I could get X better with a, a Ford or a, a Ram or whatever? That's number one. Number two is old tech or dated tech. They don't have anything flashy or new in the truck, you know? The new generation, the current generation, and while I may not be a part of that, I certainly include myself in it, um, likes all the bells and whistles, all that tech. We want that tech. The Tundra's just falling behind. They're not keeping up with that kind of thing. It's like they're just resting on their laurels. Now, hopefully, this new 2020 or 2021 or two, I think, model that's going to be coming out is going to address some of that, and I really hope that they don't just follow the pack, that they're innovative, that they step up, step beyond, give us something more. Next, the mundane interior styling. A lot of people complain about that. You get into a Tundra, and well, it's nice enough. It does the job. The seats are comfy, I think. Everything looks okay, but that's the problem. It just looks okay. You get in a Tundra, and I'm not talking about the higher levels, you know, the Platinum and the 1794 and those. Most people don't buy those. They buy the SR5 or the Crew Max or whatever and down. They're just, there's no flash in them. I mean, I owned a Ram Rebel not long ago. and When you got in that truck, bam, it hit you, you know? There was a lot of flash and pizzazz in that. And I'm not saying we need to go that far with the Tundra. I mean, it doesn't have to hit you upside the head when you get in it. But it would be nice to just notice it a little bit. You know, get in and go, yeah, this is, this is pretty cool, man. I like this. Right now, you just get in and go, yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be. No big deal. Last is going to be uh, rumors of the new model. And I'm going to go back to the, the Tacoma on this for a minute. Because the Tacoma is supposed to be getting, and is getting, this refresh coming out for 2020, right? So why isn't it affecting the Tacoma's numbers? Why is Tacoma up, what, 4.8% if new models really have that much of, a, of an impact? Well, I think it's because there's nothing really all that new about it. I mean, there's some cool things, you know, the 360 degree camera, which you can only get on upper trim levels, I've heard, and an electric seat, and you know, an Apple car player. Well, who, who cares? It's nothing ground shattering, and it's nothing that's going to make people wait. So I think the, ta the Tacoma just continues as it is because those changes aren't enough to make it wait. However, on the Tundra, you hear all these rumors about all these things. It's supposed to have all this new tech and it's supposed to have better gas mileage. I've heard 30 mile per gallon. In a Tundra, that would be unheard of, right? Who knows? I've heard hybrid motors. I've heard turbos. I've heard all electric. I don't know what's going to happen. But there's so much flying around out there, so many major changes rumored with the Tundra that I think that is impacting sales. I think that's probably impacting sales far more than these other things that we've, we've seen. Not that they don't play a role, I believe that they do. But when you hear rumors of this super truck, 
I'll call it a super truck. Epic, an epic update coming out. Why wouldn't you wait if you had the choice? You know, it's just another year or two, three, I don't know. Anyway, I just wanted to get on here, talk about that a little bit. Those were the numbers, what Toyota has seen so far through June this year, and my own reasons as to why I think um, what's happening with those numbers is happening. As usual, appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on the web. Leave a comment down below. Do you agree with what I've said?